Ladies and gentlemen, hope you're all doing well, and welcome to this tournament grand finals. It's going to be myself on Slanesh facing off against Nerexa, aka Serkia, here on Bretonia, and he's going to be bringing a super off meta build. It's a halberd front line, and he also has Rapunz, Felix, and a Damsel of Heaven. So it's really cool to see some innovations, and my build is going to be very different as well. Now, normally against Bretonia, I like to go very wide with the Whip Warriors because they're very dominant in the infantry fight. And honestly, they can take some beatings from Cavalry as well. And then I really like Azazel. He's a good sniper. He's a good scalpel. He can really get those good rampages. But today I decided to try out Sigvald. So Sigvald's going to be in the front. And he's a raid boss for sure to take down. Typically, Sigvald in the Bretonian matchup, I find that he gets like over 2k value. And paying, you know, 13, 1400 for him is a great deal. So it's going to be Sigvald and a normal change for my build as well here with the Chosen of Slanesh. So these things are absolute raid bosses and some of the tankiest infantry in the entire game, actually. They have 70 melee defense, they have physical resist, they're ITP. They hit relatively hard too, not as hard as like Corn Chosen or anything like that. But the Corn Chosen are much squishier and these guys are just unholy linebackers. So we got two of those with the Cultist and a big core of Marauder Horsemen. So going to be trying to take advantage of mobility, get some javelins to throw at some of the Bretonian cavalry. All that sort of good stuff and uh, testing out a new playstyle here. We have Pavane on our caster, by the way. Nothing terribly exciting. Over here, though, for the forces of Bretonia and Nerexa, it is going to be men at arms with pole arms. Now, this is kind of an interesting tech. Sure, a Hellscourge warrior is going to beat the brakes off these guys in combat. It's going to be an absolute massacre, but for the cost, they might actually put a bit of a dent in those bad boys. And if you have them near a Grail Relique, for example, their leadership is going to be 63, which is pretty good for a men at arms tier unit, and they potentially can last a long time. Yeomen in the front, Yeomen are there to just deal with my Skirmish Cavalry, not in terms of fighting, because it would be a pretty even fight between them. More so just to screen and make sure my Javelins don't get in and get those uh, pink missiles into his units. Now for his Hero Core, this is the most exciting part of the build. He does have Rapunz, so Rapunz is just absolutely heavy metal. And no, she's not a meme. Rapunz is actually, I wouldn't say the last patch, but maybe at the very beginning of the last patch, Bretonian players were using her as a meta choice. Now she does have the Sword of Lioness, so this is pretty good for killing Sigvald type characters. You can get her in and she's going to get a huge stat boost. She has anti-infantry, good stat line, and this just gives her a lot of stopping power. On top of that, she does have the Flair de Lee banner, so she, when she's in melee, she gives melee defense and melee attack plus 10. So these Grail Guardians are going to go up to almost 70 melee defense, which is nuts. And they have a ton of armor piercing and it's a really cool synergy. Damsel of Heavens going to be using your Anon Thunderbolt on my Whip Warriors, and that's kind of a cool tech against that as well with Harmonic Convergence. And uh, Felix is there also to provide healing to Rapunz, which I think is very nice. So the battle is on, ladies and gentlemen. My Skirmish Cavalry are just poking into his halberds, which for me is a very good start. He didn't really have any archers in his opening build here, or in this build at all. I don't recall seeing any archers. So this was a very nice start. We're able to just kind of poke and, uh, you, know, you know, keep him honest here a little bit, keep him back, which is going to let me get the objectives initially. Meanwhile, Sigvald and the Chosen are going to be working up through the tree line, looking to work towards objective three. And on objective two, we're just going to be parking another unit of Chosen. So yeah, we're going to see how these elite bad boys do. You don't really want to have Chosen just sitting on guard duty on objectives. It's definitely a waste of how much money you're putting into them. But even still, they're going to capture it initially and then they'll poke out. So the skirmishing phase is going well. We've got a halberd down to half health. The Mounted Yeoman Archers, or the Mounted Yeoman, not Archers, are at negative three leadership. So overall pretty good. I did call in a Hellstrider of Slanesh. And yes, they do get annihilated by pretty much any heavy cavalry unit. But if you're able to rampage like a skirmish cavalry, like a Yeoman, which was my plan. I had the Chaos Sorcerer here. I was like, let's get a freebie, right? Let's just take down these Yeoman. But he was able to pull back and avoid that. Meanwhile, we're going to be using the Marauder Horseman to move in again and go after the uh, pole arms. Go after these pole arms as well. And we do see the uh, Mounted Yemen looking to charge in. But the brave Knights of Bretonia are going to be surging out of the tree line. It is going to be the Grail Guardians coming up to make sure that my uh, Hellstriders of Slanesh uh, don't catch their prize. So they will be retreating. And the Mounted Yemen will be saved by the Grail Guardians. And now it's time to retreat and get my strategy together. We have uh, the Chosen of Slanesh Sigvald as well as the Cultist hanging by, uh, but Rapunz is going to be a bit of a scary tech for sure. So Javelin's being thrown, not doing a bunch of damage, and Rapunz uh, de Mayonnaise is able to get away there. And now the Heavens Caster going to be prepping, getting a position, probably seeing that I've chosen to drop some fat, fat bombardments here. So we'll see what happens. Now on the other side, Horseman just going to continue harassing, and I moved him up here just to kind of poke at his halberd units, and the main thing was just to keep him from capturing the objective, right? Because if I sit here, I can potentially even cap it, but the spheres are going to push me off, but it's keeping him from getting the objective, which is good, and I believe we ended up almost getting it, so that was a bit of a blunder not grabbing that, because now it's going to go to him. I should have stayed a moment longer, but it would have been my objective for like, you know, 10 seconds. It wouldn't have been that big of a deal. So now the Chosen, the Whip Warrior is going to be moving in with Sigvald. What a heavy metal shot. And we do also have the Cultists of Slanesh in there. And the Halberds, they have the right idea. They're going to be retreating. 
And the reason why they're retreating is to uh, pull me into the Grail Guardians, which are going to be going Lance Formation down the side. They don't really do that much damage on impact, so I was pretty happy with this. Sigvald is engaged, and now we're going to be using, I believe, the Pavane of Slanesh. So we do use the Pavane on top of the Grail Guardians. They're already like in combat where I want them to be with my elite soldiers, but Pavane still does good damage, so you still should be activating that there. Meanwhile, the Mounty DM is going to be circling around the side, looking to push my Marauder Horseman back, and uh, it's a little bit of a wild fight here. As far as value goes, we are a little bit ahead here. Our Whip Warriors, though, are taking a surprising beating. I do use Hysterical Frenzy, which is a really good buff spell. Puts them up to 82 melee attack, and they're going to be grinding here while the Cultist of Slanesh knows that we need some reinforcements. So we're going to be calling out some of the Ladies of the Night. And here they come, uh, ice skating out of the warp. Now they're going to be turning around and attacking these Foot Squires and rear charging into the Men at Arms. And the leadership is holding for Bretonia because of the Grail Relief, which is very cool. In the meantime, we continue circling our Marauder Horsemen, getting throwing axes into the pole arms that are uh, trying to screen us, but it's pretty cost effective for us to just javelin into those guys. They don't have shields. And, you know, I felt like this trade would eventually go bad for me, so I was like, okay, I need to push all fronts. So here we have the uh, Chosen making our way to his back point, and the other Chaos Warriors with Hell Scourges going to be doing the same thing. Also, his Knights of the Realm are now being called in in mass. So we have one Knight of the Realm here, another one on the other side, and thankfully we do crush these pole arms. So we get a flanking charge with the Hell Striders. We do have the Mark of Slanesh. I don't think they have Devastating Flanker. They don't. But it was enough to break them, and uh, we're trying our best here. So Seeker's called in. I'm a little bit on the fence about them in this matchup. The presence of Grail Knights and Grail Guardians and how squishy they are with the magic damage Bretonia has, especially with Fae Enchantress, makes them a little bit risky. But in many ways, they're pretty good at killing Bretonian Cavalry. They have really good armor piercing, and if you can buff them up with Hysterical Frenzy or the Slanesh Lore Passive, uh, they're able to bump and grind pretty well. You can see they're cutting through these Yalemen and also getting good damage against the Knights of the Realm here. But a second Knight of the Realm will be coming in to liberate the uh, Peasants from this demonic onslaught. And I am going to be probably losing a little bit of ground here. In the meantime, Sigvold kind of getting his butt kicked here a little bit by old Raponce, the Mayonnaise. Uh, she is hanging in there, taking some damage as well. The Cultists of Slanesh, nice anti-infantry bonus doing work. And the Chosen are just kind of running out of steam. The Foot Squires were able to do some good work. And these are steroided Foot Squires. They have really good stats. 34, 34, basically like Greatsword tier now. Uh, because of Raponce, her aura, her banner, uh, the Flare to Lee banner, made them really, really good into my Chosen, which normally would have been a bad fight. As far as this goes, though, on this side, it's going well. Chosen, no surprises. They took a while to get through those uh, Spearmen at Arms, but they do get through eventually. And the Whip Warriors will get through these Spearmen at Arms right here. I mean, they take literally no damage. The Peasants did, like, maybe, like, you know, 1% HP damage. So, yeah, they're doing pretty good at holding those guys at bay. Meanwhile, on this side, my Marauder Horseman trying to provide a little bit of fire support, but the Knights of the Realm were able to overwhelm the position for the most part. Seeker's still fighting, up to about 800 value. They're a 1,000 gold units, so the fact that they got that value in a 2v1, I think, was pretty decent. They do have more Hellscourters nearby, but unfortunately, I have run out of ammunition on my Javelin, so that felt pretty bad. And um, Sigvald is trying to fight, but he's a little bit unsupported now. The uh, Cultists did get killed by Mayonnaise here. And on top of that, the Chosen are looking a little bit, you know, worse for the wear. And they've only gotten 700 or 800 value so far. Felix beat up, but Felix is an anti-infantry character. Uh, something I wasn't doing very well this game, admittedly, is I wasn't spam-clicking Sigvald on Felix. I probably could have been able to get a kill or get in very low, but I just kind of let Sigvald do his thing and grind in the fight. And I was focusing on the, you know, the high micro that Slanesh has elsewhere. And that ended up biting me in the butt a little bit. But as far as value trading goes, it's pretty even. It's a very, very close game. I have objective two. We are currently stealing his back objective. The Chosen of Slanesh have now encountered some of the Halberds, and I was really impressed with how well the Halberds held up against the Chosen. Nice rear charge for my opponent here, taking advantage of my lack of mobility and, you know, just the uh, kind of the narrow depth I have in my formations here. And they do get a nice rear charge, but I do rampage them. So we use Fascination, which is the Slanesh Tier 3 army ability, which basically he loses control, has to listen to some of that sweet little John, and look at that. Man, nice bombardment. That was the Uran and Thunderbolt. And that thing has been doing good work this game. 800 value so far. We get a full sandwich on his cavalry, though. So the Knights of the Realm get wrecked here. The Chosen taking quite a bit of damage against those pole arms. And here on this side, I commit all my cavalry because Sigvald uh, gets killed, actually. So Mayonnaise got him. So Raponce was able to get the kill, and uh, that was rough. So I tried to save him at the last second by throwing all my cavalry in. But unfortunately, that just gave my opponent even more value. What I should have done in retrospect is probably unsummon those cavalry and get some free points and then uh, send them back in. I also had some Forsaken arrive. Forsaken are good against Bretonia in some ways. If you have the cavalry under control, Forsaken are excellent at killing the ground-based troopers. Like, Forsaken would mulch through the pole arms and different troops like that. But now that old uh, Sigvald is dead, which is something that doesn't happen terribly often, it's going to be very tough. And those Forsaken, their leadership, probably not going to hold up. Other sweep bombardment's going to be going down to the Chosen, but we do manage to steal his back objective, which is pretty fat. So that felt good, and it kind of made me think, okay, I'm still in this game, even though I'm down on value a little bit. We'll resummon Sigvald. Everything's going to be okay. And another unit I'm kind of experimenting with in this matchup is going to be the Exalted Demonette. Now, these things, if they can catch a Bretonian Cavalry unit to stay in combat, they will crush them. But if they do get Cycle Charged, their HP is very low for their cost. 
And uh, they're definitely, you know, going to be paying the troll toll a little bit. But we do have this point. The Bretonian troopers here are mostly expendable. We push back the Knights of the Realm. Some foot squires have arrived now. Chaos Warriors of Slanesh with Hellscourges, I believe, do beat Chaos or foot squires. But it's not a great fight. In terms of, like, cost, these things cost 900 foot squires or a couple hundred gold less. And if you get Rapunz in there providing the melee attack and melee defense buff to the foot squires, you'll probably start to lose that fight. So Rapunz proving to be a really, really good force multiplier. Like, I'm so used to playing against Bretonian players who use just the Pain Chantress every time. And, you know, you don't really have to worry about your characters like Sigvald being bullied, right? Like, this fight without Rapunz, I probably would have won. The multiplying effects that he had here, you know, it made a huge difference in that engagement, which was really, really cool. So Devoted Marauder is going to be slamming into the Mended Arms here. And we do see the Chaos Sorcerer of, um, I believe, yeah, Slanesh. I thought I had a second one there, but we do manage to break some of the cavalry units. Grail Guardians, though, still a huge pain in the butt, sitting at 2,000 HP. And uh, their magic damage so good. Look how quickly they kill those Exalted Demonettes. And that's where I start to drop even more value, which feels pretty bad. As far as this point goes, we do have the Chosen and the Hellscourge Warriors. But Rapunzel is making quick work of them. And it looks like another Grail Guardian did get called in which is such a cost-effective armor-piercing unit, and with the Flare to Lead banner, they're at 50 melee attack and almost 70 melee defense. My Whip Warriors basically will do nothing against them, so that's going to be a very, very tricky pickle. Over here, we do have the Exalted Demonettes. Try to get a little bit of Sweet Sorrow on those bad boys. We are up in points, but not enough to just, like, straight-up sweep the game, and the value difference is getting pretty staggering at this point. So here, it's basically going to be GG. We get Sigvald coming in. He's going to waddle up, but I respect you guys too much to really try and, you know, throw you for a loop when a game is... You guys, most of you guys know the game is over. There's a huge value difference. I don't have access to any healing. Slanesh is not a faction that plays super well from behind. They kind of can, but you want to keep the value even with them and then kind of drag the game out with your mobility and whatnot. We get a couple of cute engagements here. The Seekers of Slanesh able to mow down some of these units, but really Sigvald coming back is cool. He, he kicks the, you know... Beats the brakes off uh, Felix there. Felix isn't going to have much of a chance against him, but he also is going to be capping my back point here. I do have some warriors coming in, but he's got such cavalry dominance, and Rapunzel is just chasing off my caster. There's so many things that are just going southward, and his value gap is only getting bigger. And yeah, Sigvald's doing some cute stuff. You know, he's grinding through these warriors. I get some more Forsaken being called in. Hysterical Frenzy popped on them to make them just absolute murder machines, but it ain't going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. GG well played. He played a really good game. Uh, Rapunzel was a huge breadwinner, killing my Chosen. Also, my build, I think, was a bit unorthodox. It was experimental. Uh, I had had some limited success with Chosen and the... Uh, the Exalted Demonettes against another Bretonian player, but it was limited, so I was like, okay, let's push it. And this was the Grand Finals of a tournament. I managed to get to the Grand Finals of a tournament on a Sunday night, but um, it was a risky place to try it, but I figured it might catch him off guard, but alas, uh, it wasn't the way. And I'll show you guys the build. So he's a, he's a good Bretonian player. Uh, I also played against somebody who exclusively mains Bretonia and has been at the top of the leaderboard consistently with um, Bretonia. In the previous tournament, the one I was actually able to win, uh, about two weeks ago, and I did win this matchup. Um, so I'll show you guys what that build looked like in the opening and give you guys a little bit of, uh, you know, my opinion on all that. So yeah, the Chosen were not super good. They managed to get some value, but they're $1,450. they are expensive. I mean, I guess they held for a long time under heavy pressure, but it wasn't quite enough. Um, looking here, the Cultists did fine. The Pavane Caster was cool. The Horsemen were... I think having them as a reserve unit rather than in the main army, because what's going to happen is here, they can screen you with heavy cavalry very well, and even light cavalry, and many Bretonian players will bring present archers, which will easily shut them down. So that was very risky. Um, aside from that, his cavalry did great. He had really good micros, really clean, beautiful performance from him. So guys, let's go show you the proper build, or a build that would work better, and uh, I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so here we are with the other build. So in, uh, if I'm looking back at the build correctly, we had double cultists. I think they're pretty good. The demonette summons are really nice. And they can clear out some of the footspires and halberd type units pretty effectively. Now, the whip warriors are extremely good. I think having a big front line of them is going to be way more cost effective. Like, yes, the chosen trade well, but I bet you these guys would get a similar amount of value just simply because I can cover more surface area, which is going to keep me from getting flanked. Now for the Lord, I've really uh, had a lot of success with Azazel. He's an excellent scalpel unit. Uh, you can go in, pick off Paladins, pick off Felix, hit and run, get away, uh, you know, and really have surgical strikes, right? So we would, um, in this situation, cut the Domineering Aura, keep Tempter, and go with Spell Spam. So we would do Lash of Slanesh and Acquiescence. So instead, Pavane is good, but Bretonian Cavalry are really tanky and often have healing. So I think just going for Lash and Acquiescence to win a lot of those fights and spam those cheap spells. And you can even throw in Hysterical Frenzy if you want to. I think might be better, although Pavane is very, very strong. Arguably, they're, they're both going to be feasible strategies. So on top of that, for reserves, you definitely want to get some of the health striders, right? Uh, these guys are great just at getting in there quickly and helping and plugging the gaps in your formations. Another thing that I think is a pretty good call-in against Bretonia is going to be a soul grinder. So you can even put it in your starting army if you want to. 
you do a little something, something like this. So then you can keep the Grail Guardians honest, right? These guys hit very hard. They have anti-large. They have high armor. Not that it matters against Grail Guardians so much, but um, for the most part, I would say it's reasonably helpful. So you're going to be maxing out on the Hell Scourge boys, getting these, and then getting the Devoted Marauders. These guys fight pretty well against Bretonian Chaff, and then you can throw in a couple of Devoted Spears. So a couple of those, like so. And last but not least, like the problem with Slanesh is a lot of their units are just haggard. Like, fiends are terrible, their spawn aren't very good. The big demons are okay, but peasant archers will kill them too easily, so that's way too risky. Otherwise, they would be good against, like, real guardians and things like that. But, um, yeah, for the opening build, you could even, like, throw this guy in reserve and do a wider opening. So you can get mirror guard mixed in there. They're very, very good. And, um, yeah, they just have great stats. And then we would throw in another whip warrior. And that could, you know, very much be your starting build, right? You just use something like this, and you're going to be cozy. Um, I think the Exalted Demonettes are a mistake. Bretonia does struggle a little bit against your armor. So going for, like, an armor spam, I think, is good. So Forsaken, I think we can cut down to the Whip Warriors a little bit. Maybe just go for the Princes of Perfection. And from here, I think having one Seeker is good. I think they do get wrecked a lot, but there are times where you need something fast that hits hard to get up and, and get the job done. I don't think the Javelins are going to be particularly useful. And from here... You know, you could just throw in either another spear or another devoted marauder. This was pretty much the build that I had sex with. Uh, had sex with. Oh my god, the Slaneshi pun, <laughs> the Slaneshi twist. I love it. But this is the build that I had success with in a previous tournament against a top returning player. So, um, I think just the wider armor, their cavalry is going to be stretched thin, and it mitigates the efficiency of their knights of the realm having all this armor. And the double cultists can probably fight better against their pawns together with Azazel's help. Um, you might be able to win that hero fight simply by debuffing and using Hysterical Frenzy. And Azazel's insane, too, with the Demon Blade, especially against a Bretonian build that doesn't have healing. Like, he could probably get in there and beat Rapunce up with the help of the Cultist and a little bit of magic and some, you know, cowardly tactics. And then the Soul Grinder would be the first call-in. So you would open with this, and then you call in the Soul Grinder afterwards, and then just kind of spam out whatever you need from there. So, um, yeah, that's it. GG well played to my opponent. He played like a champ as always. And we'll see you guys on the other side.